Okay, I've got a uh, garden hose around this to make uh, a rel relatively small recuperator. Uh, let's, I'm going to go pull some insulation off the wall over there, then we can uh, cover this and see uh, what kind of cooling it'll produce. Okay, that's covered with insulation now. Uh, I've got the compressor running, stable at around 200 psi. Uh, it's connected up to the shop air compressor. Get, get some boost, get more airflow. Uh, hopefully, hope, hopefully you can hear me over the noise. Uh, let's put the uh, bottle on this to see uh, if it starts to cool down. Put a thermocouple on the uh, entrance to the recuperator. Just get a good indication of temperature. on there properly. Okay, that's on, and the temperature dropped 0.2 degrees now, so it is generating cooling. I'll have to get some insulation, put it around the outside of this, and uh, then we'll see how cold it actually gets. The pressure's still holding relatively well. The uh, shop air compressor is putting out as much air as it can. Degree. It's working relatively well. And this tube is starting to get a little bit warm. Uh, it's quite a bit, that one's quite a bit warm coming out of the compressor. There's an oil separator inside this uh, uh, armor shield here. I built that because uh, I used to think a two inch uh, cast iron T, and I'm not sure the pressure rating of that fitting, so in case it explodes, I built a, uh, an armor casing around it. That's starting to get warmer now. Ooh, it's moving quite well. I'm going to get some more insulation around this, and then we'll see how it goes from there. It's been running for a few minutes now, or about five minutes, and the temperature hasn't dropped that much. Um, it's starting to move a little bit better now, but I'm thinking the uh, recuperator tube isn't long enough because the air coming out of this tube is, seems quite a bit cooler than the tube it, uh, itself actually is. So I think the, the better, longer recuperator at the system level, higher efficiency, should work better. The pressure is going up a little bit. I'm wondering if the valve is becoming blocked. We have to watch that closely. It's dropping slowly. I think I'm going to put another garden hose on this and see, uh, see if that produces any better performance. The pressure is rising further. I think the, uh, the valve might be blocking up now. So I'm probably going to have to terminate this run. Looks, looks like we got to about 5 degrees on that run. Yeah, definitely I'm going to have to make this recuperator tube longer. And I, if I remember correctly, the original patent was about, it had, a, had one about 100 meters long. And this is only about 5 or 6 meters. I wonder if the uh, this thing actually froze up. It feels almost uh, freezing. I'm thinking that's actually why it clogged. It, it froze up, it didn't, uh, didn't get clogged. There's basically no flow going through at all. Let's uh, open up the container and see. Yeah. Second. Put that down. Oh yes, that is. I would say that is ice down in there. Yes. So. It did reach zero, so that's reading incorrectly. I think it's because I just brought this in from inside and the meter is still warm, so the reference uh, sensor inside is still warm. But that's pretty good. This compressor also stayed reasonably cool during that run, so I think as long as you feed it with a decent supply of air at a good pressure, the compressor stays relatively happy. Okay, that was a pretty successful run. Um, 
Looks like I'm gonna have to make the recuperator much longer because the uh, basically need to get the delta T between the uh, outgoing air and the incoming air to be much smaller than the amount of cooling or delta T produced by the uh, expansion uh, cooling of the gas, the Joule Thompson cooling. I'm also going to have to find a much better way of dehumidifying the air to stop the uh, air from freezing in the expansion valve and blocking it up. Or the expansion valve will have to be designed in such a way that it resists blocking up or would let the blockage pass if it got blocked up. I'm thinking to dehumidify the air it might be worthwhile to move this oil separator to the other side of the uh, desuperheater coil. That would because I think the air, the high high temperature air stores more water than low temperature air. So once the water, once the air cools in this, more water condenses out of it. So it would be best to put this at around just above freezing, and then that will pretty much condense all the water out of the air, and then well, it can go into the oil water separator, and then the air should be pretty dry after that. I'd also like to apologize for the first video in this series not being HD. Uh, I've had a huge nightmare trying to edit the video from this new camera. My computer is completely incapable of even playing it back at full speed. Uh, you apparently need, you need a uh, an Intel i7 quad-core to play back the 1080p60 from this camera. So I'm going to try the editing software that comes with the camera and hopefully that will uh, actually allow me to upload a, a uh, full resolution video. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.